As much as I'd like to go outside and do a nice bike review today, that noise you can hear in the background is the rain and it's pouring. So this seemed like a perfect time to tell you three things you should know before you ride your e-bike in the rain and one thing you should never do. Bolton e-bikes. If you want an electric bike that's better, then ride along with me and my channel. And since electronics and water generally don't mix, here's me putting some bike parts in water just to make you cringe. Now in all seriousness, the KT LCD3 is not really designed to be waterproof. So that's the first thing that I would protect. Now if you get caught in a light shower and you get a little bit of water on the screen, it's probably not gonna hurt anything at all. However, if you get caught in a downpour, like we're hearing outside right now, that could cause you a problem. In the case with the LCD3 and the LCD8H, the way they're typically wired, if the screen gets too wet and it dies, that's probably going to kill the power to the bike and you're going to be pedaling your way home in the rain. So let's say it looked like a nice sunny day in the morning, you decided to take your bike to work, and then midday a thunderstorm comes through and you need to get home on your bike. All you need is a plastic bag and a rubber band. Now this doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be functional. It can be any size plastic bag, basically you're just going to stick it over the top of your screen and take your rubber band and get it tight enough to hold the bag on. Doesn't look the greatest, but you can still see the screen and it's gonna keep water from getting inside from underneath and into your screen and it'll protect it for a short trip through the rain. You also have a switch on the handlebars. You can do the same thing with this, just put a smaller bag around it. You can still push the buttons through the bag, but it'll keep the switch protected from the water as well. Now in case you're wondering how water resistant or waterproof these particular LCDs might be, there's no official specification, but I have taken the LCD8H, that's the new color display, apart to see how it looks. Now it does have sealant on the screws on the back holding it together, and there's also a good seal underneath that I think is going to hold the water out much better than the older screen. But once again, there's no official specification on either of these. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the motor controller and the connections that go from your screen, your throttle, basically any of the weak points on the bike where moisture could get in. And if you've installed an aftermarket e-bike kit, you are likely to find a bunch of connectors like this. And these are not waterproof nor water resistant by any means whatsoever. So what do you do if you have these types of connectors on your bike? I've seen a lot of people take things like this, which is heat shrink, put it over the connectors, and go ahead and seal everything up. But that causes a problem. It's not actually watertight unless you add some goop inside, which you certainly can do, and put zip ties around it. And it's a little bit more complicated to keep things out. So bear in mind that if you just put heat shrink around the connectors, it will hide them, but it's not necessarily watertight. And worse, I've seen it actually trap the water inside so it can't escape and cause failures that way. Now this, however, also looks like heat shrink, but it's different. This one has a double wall and the outer wall is a nice tough shell to keep things protected. But the inner wall is a different type of material that actually melts to your wire and to your connectors. So it's a little bit more of a pain to remove if you ever wanted to change something but it gives you a tight, watertight seal around your connectors and your wire, whereas a standard heat shrink will not. Now, in order to get over the connectors, what I'd recommend is finding one that has a high shrink ratio, meaning if this has a two to one shrink ratio, it'll shrink down to half of its original size after you've heated it up. 
Uh, this particular one has a three to one shrink ratio, so this can actually be used on a fairly small connector, and there's all sorts of different sizes. You can go up to four to one and various things. So this is an option if you have one of those types of controllers with those connectors. Put this around the connector and seal it up completely, and that will help. And the better option, if you have it, is a controller that comes with waterproof connectors from the get-go. These are known as Juliet or Hygo connectors. They come in different pin configurations and different colors, and they are watertight as is. I personally have used these on all of my bikes and have not had any leak yet. Now there's something called an IP rating, which tells you if something is dustproof or waterproof and exactly how much. These have an IP66. Now in the category and the different classifications, basically that means these are rated against powerfully jetting water. So not just a water blast or direct water spray, but an actual powerful water spray. So maybe something like a pressure washer. And finally, most of the e-bike motors out there are going to be protected against water with a specific IP rating as well. This is a motor case from a Bafang 750 watt hub motor. And if you look closely at the front edge of the case, there's really no seal or anything to keep water out permanently. This has an IP65 rating when it's all sealed up. So it's totally sealed against dust. However, it's only protected against light jetting water. So something like a pressure washer directly on the motor could get water inside. In fact, I've seen bikes that have been left out in the rain with the Bafang hub motors and the motors totally seize up and they're completely rusted on the inside when you pull them out. And that's gonna lead us into the last and final thing you should never do with your electric bike, and that is to leave it out in the rain. Now, as we've seen, some of the specifications protect against splashing or even heavy sprays of water, but none of them that I've seen have protected against full immersion. Now, as your bike sits out in the rain, the water starts to soak into things, and it is gonna get things wet and cause you problems. So in conclusion, yes, you can ride your e-bike in the rain, but you should take proper precautions with your LCD screen, any exposed connectors, or anything else on the bike that might get wet that is electrical in nature. So hope you enjoyed this video. Come back for more. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell so you get notifications when new videos come out. I'll be back again on Tool Tuesday for sure, if not sooner.